At the start of my art journey, I created some questionable work and I wish I had more pictures of my old work, but it's taken me a lot to get to where I am with my art. So I'm going to share my secrets for how my drawings went from bad to good and the switch that had to happen for me to really make strides with my art. And it's about to be a long one. So grab a drink or even some art, a drawing or a painting and let's go. Hey people, it's Temi if you're new here and it's Tuesday so it's time for another Temi's tirade. This is a series on my channel where I come to rant about art stuff on Tuesdays. Last week I spoke about useless art advice I am tired of hearing. So if you want to see that video, I'll link the playlist here. Today I'm going to get into some useful tips to actually help you guys with your art. So I'm going to share seven things that have helped me with my art. These things helped my art go from bad to good and it will hopefully help you too. The seventh point is the most important. So make sure you stay tune for that. We're about to flourish and level up our art and I'm excited for us so let's go. For those of you that don't know anything about me, I'm over 10 years into my art journey. I specialise in portrait drawings and I started with graphite pencil and I transitioned into using colouring pencils which is my present primary medium. If you want to hear about my art journey and how I've managed to get to the point I am at today then I'll link that video here but today I want to get straight into the things that have helped me on my portrait journey and you don't have to be into portraits to take something from this video, you don't even have to be into realism. These points apply regardless of your art style. So here are seven things that helped my art to actually become good. Number one, practice. Before you click off the video, <laughs> as cliche as it sounds, it is so important. How do you expect to improve if you're not actually picking up your supplies to try stuff? Nobody wakes up creating masterpieces. I'm sure your favorite artist started somewhere. You need to put in the time to practice and your art will level up. I'm not saying draw every day, Ain't nobody got time for all of that. But I am saying, make sure you're putting time in consistently and only as much as you can, but with practice with each piece, you will gradually start to get better and better. And it's not until you look back at your old work that you realize how far you've come. So don't get discouraged on the journey. Now with practice, you need to make sure that you're focused in what you're doing. So you need to focus on specific things that you actually want to improve. Think about your areas of struggle. If it's proportions, why don't you try doing many small drawings of the face in different directions? If you struggle with anatomy, try practicing drawing different poses. If you struggle with making realistic skin tones, try to practice to draw many different people of different shades. The important thing here is to actually put pen to paper or pencil to paper or paintbrush to paint <laughs> to canvas. <laughs> Here's one of my first colour pencil drawings and I did it in 2016. So it's of Zendaya, the actress and singer. And it's not bad. I definitely didn't do a bad job. However, there is room for improvement. But here's Zendaya again drawn by me, but this time in 2019. I'm sure you can see the stark improvement. Just even with how much richer the skin tone is, the vibrancy of the colors, the hair. And I got to that point with tons of practice. And I actually did 23 drawings in between that first Zendaya drawing and the second one. If you don't believe me, take a look at my Instagram. I've posted all my drawings there since 2012. So yes, practice is very important. Make sure you trust the process, try new things, but keep practicing. Practice is a great tip, but unfortunately it is not enough. It works best if you're actively learning. So guide practice is even better which leads on to number two be committed to learning this is a great way to help you to actually improve your technique because you could be doing the same thing with practice over and over again and end up going nowhere so with learning i'm not saying spend thousands and thousands and thousands on art school ain't nobody got the money for that i mean feel free to if you want to but it's definitely not the only way in this internet day and age there are thousands of tutorials online and especially here on YouTube. No matter what niche or subject matter you're interested in, I'm sure someone's made a video breaking it all down. And if they haven't, be that person. I have plenty portrait drawing tutorials myself and especially colour pencil ones. So if you're interested in those, I'll link the playlist down below. At the end of the day, we all learn in different ways. Some people can just watch a speed drawing and pick up all the techniques they need to pick up, but some other people might need things broken down and really explained. Find the style that works best for you and spend time really consuming the content. Pay attention to the specific things you need to learn. If your drawings are looking a little bit one kind, maybe you need a lesson on anatomy. Or if your sketch is off, maybe you need help with your proportions. The point is you need to understand the specifics that you need to improve. Look out for those tutorials and be committed to learning. Find artists that are doing what you want to do and follow them on the journey. Ask questions, inquire of them. I'm sure they'll be happy to share what they know. I know I am. Art is just like any other skill. You need to learn the basics, learn the fundamentals, 
and then you continue to grow. But make sure you're committed to continuous learning. There's no ceiling, there's always room for improvement. But take it one step at a time. A little bit of progress each day is much better than nothing and it would end up accumulating over the course of a year. So seek knowledge and you shall find. <laughs> Number three, patience. I've spoken a lot so far about making sure you're learning from people and making sure you put the time into practice. But in conjunction with those, you really need patience. And this comes in multiple folds. Of course, you need patience over the course of your art career, but you also need it, especially with each piece you're actually doing. The amount of patience and perseverance you can give to a piece is what can make a huge difference with the outcome. If you're a regular subscriber, you know I speak a lot about the ugly phase. It's basically the point of the drawing where everything is looking a little bit higgy and haggard, and it's only you that can persevere past it. You guys don't know how many times I've been so ready to give up on a drawing, and I get it, but it's a lot easier to give up than to actually persevere. And the ugly face is like a tipping point. It takes so much to actually get past it, but once you do, it's smooth sailing. Perseverance will take you so far. It's not easy, but it's so necessary. Also with patience, it's important not to rush your drawings. You might have deadlines for whatever reason. It might be a school project or a commission or even just a self-inflicted deadline. But rushing is not going to do you any favors. Give your art the time it deserves. I can't really speak about patience without mentioning drawing fatigue because it's very real. You know when the exhaustion comes over you, you're exerting so much mental and even physical energy. It'll help so much to just take time away from the piece. So go and work on something else or don't do art at all. Have a good stretch, take regular breaks, grab something to eat and then come back to the piece with fresh eyes and fresh motivation. And practically, I find that towards the end of my pieces, I am done. I'm tired, I'm ready to move on to the next one. And at that point, it's like, I can't just leave the hair half done or not draw any clothes. So I have to persevere. And because I know that I'm like this, I start with the part of the piece I want to spend the most amount of time on. And in my portraits, I'm most excited for the eyes. I want all the eyes in my piece to look correct, to look sharp. So I start there so that I can give it my full attention. And then I move on to the rest of the face, getting the rest of the features right, getting the skin right. And then I think about the rest of the drawing. So breaking the drawing down in stages like this really helps me. If the eyes are looking correct, nobody's going to care that the top looks weird or that the earring might be wonky. So start where you want to put your most focus. You naturally have more motivation at the start of a piece and then try to keep your patience and your perseverance to finish the piece. Number four invest in your craft. I'm not saying go and waste money on the most expensive supplies in the world. Ain't nobody got money for all of that. And at the start, it's absolutely not necessary. So start where you can with what you can afford, but aim to get better supplies as you grow. Disclaimer, cheap or more affordable supplies doesn't mean it's bad. There's some cheaper art supplies that really be doing the damn thing. I made a video using cheap Crayola pencils on one side and the more expensive Karen Dash Luminance pencils on the other. And it just goes to show you can still do a lot with cheaper supplies, but there are a few things to consider. Number one, cheap supplies can be very frustrating. You can pick up the exact same Crayolas I used in that video and you might get annoyed with the results and you might be thinking it's not giving what y'all said it would have gave. It's not even giving what y'all said it was supposed to give. And this is because cheap supplies are not necessarily the easiest things to use. You'll need better technique or maybe even other supplies to supplement it. And most of all, you will need more time and patience. The third most important thing to consider with cheaper supplies is that it might not be archival. So this is about how your artwork can last over the years or if it's exposed to sunlight. Cheaper supplies tend to have a lower light fastness rating. So the artwork might fade over time. This is a massive thing to keep in mind if you're considering selling original pieces or commissions. And the more you get used to an art medium, the more you understand what you really want from it. So accept your present supplies are doing exactly everything you need from it. An upgrade will be coming soon, so make sure you invest in your craft. The biggest jump I personally had with my color pencil drawings was when I invested in pad pastels. I found that I was really struggling to get smooth coverage for the skin in my pieces. And in contrast, here is the first piece I did with a pan pastel base. I'm sure you can see the improvement and I'm going to quickly read the caption from my Instagram. Thanks for all the love and support with this drawing. I really struggled at a point because the skin was not looking good at all. I tried Bouquet's technique of putting a layer of pan pastel down and then using colour pencils over the top, but it wasn't working for me at all. I just kept thinking, why do I think I can draw? I should just give up now. I should just restart. But the eyes came out really good. Cut it out and stick it on a new drawing. So I guess the moral of the story is keep going. Keep building layers and trust your work and God. And this just highlights a few of the points that I've spoken about already. Number one, I was committed to learning. So the first person I saw do this pan pastel base technique was Bouquet. It gave a solution to a problem that I had. And I got that because I was consuming other artists content. Number two, 
I invested in the supplies. Pan pastels are hella expensive. I've only got a tiny set of about 10 colors and I think it cost me like 60 pounds, but it's lasted so long and it's so worth it. It's literally my holy grail. Someone tell Pan pastels to sponsor me because your girl wants some more colors though. Number three, I practiced and persevered to get to my outcome. Looking at the completed piece, I'm sure you can't imagine how close I was to giving up, but the important thing is that I didn't. And number four, patience. It wasn't easy, but I got there. So back to investing in your art, it's not always possible and I would say make sure you're reinvesting in your art so if you're making money from commissions or prints put that money back into your art business but if you're making no money with your art or you don't know how to I've got a video where I explain different ways you can make money as an artist I'll link it here and down below but yes investing in your art is so 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 important and you will see the rewards start where you can and with what you can afford but as time goes on focus on investing in this skill please give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and in the ad breaks leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. Number five, scale down. And I'm sure that's not a tip you expected to hear from me today, but simply scaling the size of your pieces can help you see quicker improvement. And let me explain why. Most of my drawings used to be A3 size, and I don't remember why I chose that size for my sketchbook in the first place. And while that was great, I found that having the bigger size wasn't really adding anything to my pieces. If anything, I was actually wasting time taking so long finishing the pieces because of how big they were. And since all of these pieces are just for practice, if someone's looking at my portfolio online on like Instagram, they wouldn't know or even care what size the pieces were. So I did a shift from A3 to A4 and then eventually to A5. As you can see, the quality of my work didn't deteriorate because of the size. In fact, there are a couple of years between each of these drawings, so I'm sure you can even see the improvement. But scaling down helped me to fine tune the amount of time I was spending on art. I was able to practice drawing more people in less time. And you can scale to whatever you'd like. You can even do loads of different drawings on one page. It's up to you what you decide to do. It also puts less pressure to try to create masterpieces. But imagine spending so long on a big piece and then you finish it and you don't even like the outcome. You definitely would have learned something from the piece, so it's not completely wasted time, but you would have wasted significantly less time if if it was a smaller piece. Number six, critique your work. But you need to think of this in the context of how far you've come. So don't compare yourself to other people. That's not what I'm saying at all. Make sure you focus on your own lane. Only compare today's artwork to yesterday's or even last year's, not to someone else's. If you really want to improve and make strides with your art, you need to look at it with a very critical eye. The more you understand your art medium better, the more you learn from other artists, the more you notice points of improvement in your own artwork. And it won't be straight away. So usually we're most impressed with our artwork as soon as we're done with it. Then we look at it and we're like, is that me, yeah? <laughs> and that's great, you've come a long way. Make sure you pat yourself on the back. But there's always room for improvement. And if you're into realism, it's literally impossible to capture every single detail. But even if you've created the most amazing detailed piece, there could still be room for improvement with your workflow or your technique. And notice, I'm asking you to do this to yourself. Do this to your own artwork. I'm not encouraging you to focus on external criticisms because people just do the most. I made a video about the useless art advice and people really like to share their unsolicited opinions and sometimes listen but don't take everything on board you need to take all of that with a pinch of salt but here we're focusing on you looking at your own pieces and criticizing it and I know we can be our biggest critics so don't go over the top just appreciate the artwork for what you're creating be grateful for how far you've come and then look for improvement points and focus on a little bit at a time and finally number seven have a growth mindset. I think this is the most important one because it's one thing to have all the tips, all the techniques, but if your mindset is off, then it's long. So what is a growth mindset? There's a book by the psychologist, Carol Dweck, and it explains about a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset. A fixed mindset assumes that our character, our intelligence, our creative ability is static and we can't change any in a meaningful way. But a growth mindset thrives on challenge. Failure is not a sign of unintelligence, but it's a springboard for growth and stretching our abilities. So in the art space, someone with a fixed mindset might think, I don't know how to draw and there's nothing I can do about it. But having a growth mindset means you're stretching yourself, trying to develop this skill, trying to learn something new. To someone with a fixed mindset, effort is a bad thing because they're thinking if I was smart or talented enough, I wouldn't need to put effort in. But with a growth mindset, you realize effort is what makes you talented or smart. So having a growth mindset is all about dedication to learning and constructive action. It works so well with many of the tips that I've shared today. So I hope you were taking notes or re-watch the video as many times as you need to. With a growth mindset, you embrace challenges with every piece that you're doing. You persist in the face of the ugly phase. You know it will take effort to achieve mastery. 
learn from criticisms and find lessons and inspiration in the success of others. Whew, rant over. So those were seven things I believe has helped me to get my art to where it is today. And I hope it helps you too. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on my next one. Goodbye.